Many of you may wonder what a high school student is doing on such a prestigious stage. What was the spark that got me here? Don't worry, I'm not sure either. But one thing I am sure of is that this video may help explain it. This is the Hutin Shanwa, ranked as one of the most supreme manuscripts in the entire world. Personal favorite of mine, a true masterpiece. Made in the 1530s, it was commissioned for Emperor Tahmas of Stanovid Persia as a gift for the Ottoman Sultan Salim II. In 1958, it was bought by the wealthy Mr. Hutin. He dismantled the book and auctioned its many pages, one of which is this one right here. This specific leaf illustrates moments before Emperor Lazibird's death. And the leaf it says that when Emperor goes to cure his nosebleed, a magical seahorse comes out of the water and kicks him to death. However, the real cause of his death is still unknown. What do you think really happened? <laughs> I'm sure you felt a distinct difference between the beginning and the end. In the beginning, there was a still, silent, and voiceless object. However, afterwards, there was two Tarak Rajab docents explaining the object's origins, purpose, and unique story. So what is a Tarak Rajab docent? A Tarak Rajab docent is a high school student who voluntarily gives tours and interns at the Tarak Rajab Museum. I am the founder of the Tarak Rajab docent program, the first student-led docent program in Kuwait, and maybe even in the Middle East, established in May 2016. But why does this matter? History, art, and culture are the gems of every city, and I believe that these treasures should not sit idle, but have the voice they deserve. Because the physical manifestations of our past make up a crucial part of our identity. Museums are keepers of a priceless legacy, but they're only empty, lifeless spaces if it's not filled with people eager to learn and embrace one's culture and heritage. Steve Jobs, one of my personal heroes, while introducing the iPad, once said, it's not technology alone. It's technology married with the liberal arts. It's technology married with the humanities that yields the results that make our hearts sing. Now, I'm a teenage student who, like the most of us, is trying to live a balanced life, juggling between studies and sports and extracurriculars and musical instruments and family obligations and somewhat of a social life. I was always more into science and math. Art was never my thing. I realized this when I did my year seven art exam. I was asked to draw a spoon, and although I thought it was pretty good, when I got my results, I got a cool, solid 28%. <laughs> That's when I realized maybe art is not the way for me. But the museum served as my gateway to explore an interest in art and history that I never even thought I had. It soon turned out to be my place of imagination and contemplation. Let's backtrack a bit. When I was in year nine, the Dar al-Athar al-Islamiyah Museum was giving out applications for people to come and become docents. I applied because I was told, like most other kids my age were, that it would look good for university applications. Yes, I fell into that trap as well, but I soon realized it wasn't a trap at all, but one of my best life decisions. So I got accepted, and I went into my first introductory meeting. In that meeting, I discovered two very important things. One, museums do not come alive at night, like the movie Night at the Museum had depicted. And two, Volunteering means that you're not getting paid anytime soon. 
both of which were usually deal breakers to a 14 year old. To make matters worse, I was given a big blue binder filled with pages and pages and even more pages of information about the museum and the objects. You can imagine my reaction to that. Who wants to learn all that? Hence, I appropriately nicknamed it the dreaded binder. I was bored at our Saturday early morning meetings, but with some perseverance, I did end up learning the content of the dreaded binder. Soon, I was giving my first tour to a family that had entered the museum, and before I knew it, I was giving tours to friends, teachers, corporate executives, and diplomats. Something strange started happening. I started liking it. I started enjoying it because I had the power to share my knowledge and impact people's ways of looking at different objects in their culture and history in a way that lets them relate to their own life situations. I met people from different countries, speaking different languages, believing in different religions, all with their own unique stories. I still intern there today, now for over three years, but I wanted to spread my passion into a museum that I hold dear, the Tarek Rajab Museum. So consequently, in January 2016, I had an idea to make a team uh, and form a docent program with one special feature. That it was completely and utterly student-led. Letting 15-year-olds loose in a museum with expensive objects may not sound like a good idea to most people, but the directors of the Tarek Rajab Museum, Dr. Ziad and Ms. Noor, completely supported us with our crazy idea. So we went forth. I found my role reversed. This time, it was mine and my team's turn to create and share a dreaded binder. It was hard to find students to join our program at first because they couldn't digest our vision, just like how I couldn't when I first joined Darla Thar. But inspired by our founders, Tarek and Jehan Rajab, our team was formed and our team came to love the museum and with the program we had one main aim, which was to spread our passion and knowledge to the community in a way that benefits us together. Fortunately, this goal became a reality. One of the ways we did this was by hosting a fun-filled event in which we shared our knowledge with the public. I'll never forget the team huddle before the event had started. We knew that a small mistake could ruin all the hard work we had put in for months. But to quote our museum director, every international ambassador and all the other visitors had nothing but praise for our performance. Hosting an event of that caliber in the first year of our establishment was thought to be an impossible task. But as ambitious students do, time and time again, we persevered and saw it through. I'd like to share one special story of a docent, Rana Kiswani. In fact, she's a TEDx volunteer here today. She was quite timid at first, didn't like the idea of public speaking, and wasn't confident to do her first tour. But soon, after a few weeks and months into training, she became a very confident speaker and today gives incredible tours at our museum. What started as a nerd club, perceived as a meeting place for students to come out and talk about history, soon became so much more than that. We went well beyond a dreaded binder. We curated fun workshops, great brainstorming sessions, and awesome learning games in the museum itself. We were able to spread our wings into a realm that would never be explored in a usual classroom setting. Our program today plays a key role in promoting our art, history, and culture to students of diverse nationalities. This is illustrated by the heterogeneity of our docents who hail from six countries and speak at least seven languages, 
Hence, we were able to create a family of students making an exhilarating, exciting, and cultural melting pot. And, however, we had our fair share of problems. It wasn't always rainbows and bunny rabbits. We had problems uh, deciding on content for the dreaded binder, scheduling meetings, and students getting a bit too loud in our heated debates in the museum. Nevertheless, as a team, we managed to pull through and overcome the problems. We docents talk about beauty, we docents talk about power, and rather selfishly, we docents talk about ourselves. Part of the reason why I'm here today. <laughs> but we saw a challenge in a museum that didn't have a docent program, but we saw this as an opportunity to benefit the community. And we took it. What started as a quiet museum has today more than tripled the number of visitors. A vibrant place for sharing ideas, a colorful center of learning, the perfect place for dreaming. <coughs> Furthermore, in the next academic year, we plan to expand the program into the Takrajib Islamic Calligraphy Museum as well. We plan to recruit more docents, host more fun-filled events, and write more, you guessed it, dreaded binders. So, going forward, we envision the program going, growing even further. And we have succession plans ready, and we envision the program playing an integral part of our community. Now, the Tarak Raja Museum has a Dosen program, Dar Athar Museum has a Dosen program, and by January of 2016, the Tarak Raja Islamic Calligraphy Museum will also have a Dosen program. Now, imagine if there was 25 dedicated student docents in every museum in Kuwait and in every museum in the Middle East, taking time out of their schoolwork and homework to learn about their art, history, and culture, and to share it with people from inside and outside the, the country, doing this as a family, as a community, as a society. Now that would be cool. And with a little perseverance, that goal is not too far away. Now, I don't ask you all to go forward and make your own dosing programs, but I challenge you to do three things. One, I challenge you to explore a field that you weren't too interested in before because the results may surprise you. Two, find a challenge facing your community. You know, the ones we always complain about. And implement a solution beneficial to everyone. And three, trust and support the youth. Trust and support the youth with our crazy ideas. You never know what amazing solutions we may provide onto the table. To end, I'd like to quote my inspiration, my hero, the person who met, made me believe in myself, and the person that made me do what I do today. Elon Musk once said, when something is important enough, you do it even if, even if the odds are not in your favor. Thank you. <laughs>